Hi, I'm Lindsay Remor from McGill University. Hi, I'm Jason Noble. I'm a postdoctoral fellow at Université de Montréal. Hello, I am Hara Lampos, or Haris Saitis, and I am a lecturer with the Center for Digital Music at Queen Mary University of London. I am Caroline Traub from University of Montreal. I'm Zachary Walmark from the University of Oregon. The background of a study includes text-based analysis that characterize semantic associations at the level of individual instruments and perceptual experiments that measure semantic responses to a circumscribed set of stimuli, often consisting of one sound per instrument at the same pitch. Valuable as such studies are, they do not account for the huge range of acoustical attributes that are available within each instrument and the corresponding range of semantic associations. For example, most studies use middle register instrumental timbres, yet the semantic associations with this register may vary from those with the same instrument's low register and high register. The main objective of this study is to understand how timbre semantic associations vary with instrument and register. It represents the initial stage in the creation of a perceptually validated timbre semantics database, which would include a wide range of musical instrument sounds varying on a range of parameters, including pitch, articulations, dynamics, and playing technique. In this study, we chose to focus on timbre variability resulting from changes in pitch and register. Our study is realized in the context of the International Actor Partnership, Actor for Analysis, Creation and Teaching of Orchestration, which is organized in different working groups. All authors of this study are members of the Tembe Semantics Workgroup, and some of them participate in another ongoing project titled CORE for Composer Performer Research Ensemble to which this study wishes to contribute. The core ensembles include graduate students in composition and performance from different institutions who collaborate interactively to design and solve problems related to the orchestration of the ensemble. In the first stage of this project, the instrumentation of the ensemble was composed of a violin, a bass clarinet, a trombone, and a vibraphone. Accordingly, these instruments were included among our stimuli, and we look forward to bringing these two projects into conversation in the future. For this online perceptual study, 554 participants were recruited using the Prolific platform. Data from 13 of these participants were cut due to suspected bot or farmer activity. The remaining 541 participants were all fluent in English and came from a range of musical backgrounds. 78% of the participants self-identified as non-musicians. Of the re remaining musicians, most identified as amateurs. After recruitment, they were routed to a custom experiment interface platform developed using JavaScript and other standard web tools. For stimuli, we manipulated two independent variables. Participants were shown word prompts consisting of 20 orthogonal semantic dimensions for timbre, discovered by Remore and Huron. While musical stimuli, consisted of 24 short, isolated tones played by eight orchestral instruments. We used three pitches representing the low, middle, and high registers of each respective instrument. After routing to our experiment platform and completing a few demographic and musical background questions, as well as a headphones check, participants were shown short versions of the musical stimuli to familiarize them with the full range of sounds. They also completed a couple practice trials before proceeding to the main task. In our repeated measures design, participants were shown a semantic prompt, then presented the musical stimuli and asked to rate how well the semantic prompt describes each sound. This process was repeated for each of the 20 semantic scales. That is, all 24 sounds were rated on a single scale before moving on to the next scale. Ratings were made using the number keys on the keyboard on a five-point scale. Participants were per permitted to replay each sound once. The order of presentation of the semantic scales was randomized for each participant, as was the order of musical stimuli within each scale block. At random intervals during the main task, attention check questions were employed, which requested the participants to identify to the best of their ability the last instrument they heard. Next, let's look a bit more closely at our semantic and timbral stimuli. 
We derived the semantic scales used for participant ratings from the 20-dimensional model presented in Raymour and Huron, which was built from the results of open-ended interviews and rating tasks. The dimensions of Raymour and Huron's original model includes varying numbers of descriptors, up to seven terms. In order to reduce cognitive load on participants, we limited our scales to include a maximum of three terms. The phrase sharp beginning was added following the term percussive in order to clarify the term for those who might not be familiar with it. The 20 semantic scales used in the experiment can be seen on this slide. Given the range of sounds of the stimulus set, which included eight different instruments varying only by register, we initially considered the possibility that some of the dimensions might display little variance and could be trimmed from the experiment in order to increase its tractability. Thus, a pilot study was run with 20 participants in order to finalize both the stimulus set and the semantic ratings. However, after considering analysis of pilot study results, including examination of the correlation matrix among ratings, principal component analysis, and hierarchical clustering, we determined that the original 20 scales were indeed optimal. The 24 stimuli, produced using the Vienna Symphonic Library and equalized in loudness, include single sustained notes from eight instruments at three pitch levels. Sounds were edited to 1.5 second sustains, plus the natural decay of the sound, which varied in length among the stimuli dependent upon the envelope. In choosing instruments to be rated, we began by including four instruments that have been used in the Actor Project core ensembles, violin, bass, clarinet, trombone, and vibraphone, with the intention that the results could inform analyses related to that project. Vibraphone sounds were bowed rather than struck to maintain consistency of impulse type across the instruments of the stimulus set. We chose four additional instruments to balance the range of the stimuli, provide a rough balance of the standard orchestral instrument families, and maximize the diversity of orchestral timbres tested. These additional instruments included flute, oboe, trumpet, and cello. Each instrument was represented by a low, a medium, and a high pitch relative to its range. Use of a single pitch class produced, or precludes rather, a thorough representation of all three registers in all instruments. Accordingly, two pitch classes, C and G, were used in sampling pitches across registers, which allowed access to all three registers on all instruments. The selection technique prioritized this low, medium, high distribution across individual instrument ranges. The resulting set of pitches is distributed reasonably well across the orchestral ambitus, though not all pitches are represented the same number of times in the stimulus set. Mean ratings were generally in accord with expectations. For example, the highest rated stimulus on the airy breathy scale was the flute in the middle register, while the woodiest sound was deemed to be the cello in the low register, and the most sparkling, brilliant, bright sound was the oboe in the high register. Conversely, we can consider the top descriptors for each stimulus. For example, the top descriptor for oboe in the low register was sustained even, for the middle register was pure, clear, clean, and for the high register was shrill, harsh, noisy. Our most surprising observation was that the average ratings of brassy metallic showed the least amount of variance despite the inclusion of two brass instruments, suggesting that high brassiness may be a product of interactions between instruments and other parameters such as dynamics and or playing technique. We used exploratory modeling to examine relationships between ratings of each semantic dimension and instrument, register, and musician identity of the participant. Register was treated categorically, relative to each instrument as high, middle, or low. Musician identity was derived from responses to the Olin single measure item as a binary category, either musician or non-musician. Specifically, we considered 20 models in which ratings of each of the 20 semantic descriptors were predicted by instrument, register, and musician identity. The model building process included an initial assessment and establishment of each model's random structure and consideration of the inclusion of the music status variable. 
Specifically, log likelihood ratio tests were first used to compare models with random intercepts only for participant and stimulus to models with a maximal random effect structure modeled on the methods of McAdams, Douglas, and Vampala 2017. The addition of random slopes did significantly increase the goodness of fit of all 20 models, and so the maximal random structure was maintained moving forward. Next, log likelihood tests were used to determine whether or not musician identity significantly contributed to each model. Results here were mixed. While most models did not see a significant improvement in goodness of fit with the musical status variable added, six models did. Those were smooth singing sweet, percussive, raspy, grainy, gravelly, airy breathy, woody, and muted failed. Consequently, musical status um, was and the random slope for musical status were included only in these six models moving forward. For most models, both register and instrument were significant predictors. The semantic scales on the slides are listed in order of variance explained by both instrument and register from highest to lowest. Brassy metallic was exceptional in that neither register nor instrument were significant predictors. While register was significant for open, instrument was not. Conversely, while instrument was significant for focused compact, nasal buzzy pinched, and sustained even, register was not. Terms which have the strongest positive relationships with register include shrill, harsh, noisy, sparkling, brilliant, bright, ringing, long, decay, and percussive. Terms with the strongest negative relationships with register include deep, thick, heavy, raspy, grainy, gravelly, hollow, and woody. The slide here shows estimated marginal means for these six descriptor models. So what are the key takeaway points? We investigated timbre semantic associations going beyond existing work to examine how these associations vary with instrument and register in a sample of over 540 listeners. When asked to rate timbres on semantic scales, people answer with great diversity in ones. However, general trends are evident and in line with previous findings. We found that the influence of pitch height and register on timbre semantic associations is both systematic and complex. Such findings reflect the fact that timbre functions on different scales of detail, and so does its linguistic description. There is no single timbre that fully characterizes the violin or a violin. The timbre of a violin tone depends on pitch, playing effort, articulation, and so on. Our findings demonstrate that there is no single sensory description that can fully capture such within instrument timbral variability. Extensions of this work will focus on delineating the acoustical basis of timbre semantic associations and on examining the roles of musical expertise and cultural variation. We also plan to investigate musical stimuli of varying dynamics, articulations, and playing techniques. The investigation of these additional dimensions of musical sound that are known to interact with timbre will help expand the current data set towards the creation of a comprehensive, perceptually validated timbre semantics database, which will include a wide range of musical instrument sounds varying on a range of parameters. The database can be useful in orchestration pedagogy, for example, by describing how timbral affordances vary with register, and in composition, suggesting combinations of instruments ranges with specific semantic associations. Results may help inform stimuli selection and study design in future empirical work, are relevant for music analysis and digital musicology, and may be useful for training neural audio synthesis and timbre transfer systems. Thanks for listening. We look forward to discussion.